read the epistle of the first mass. We have the mass of the day of death and burial on this day of November 2nd, the All Souls Day. We we'll read here the epistle of the first mass of the All Souls Day. Reading the Epistle of St. Paul, 1st of Corinthians, chapter 15. Brethren, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall indeed rise again, but we shall not all be changed. We shall all indeed rise again, but we shall all be, not all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall rise again, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must be must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And when this mortal hath put on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? Now the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin in the law. But thanks be to God who hath given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the gospel, and the court of St. John chapter 5. At that time, Jesus said to the multitudes of the Jews, Amen, amen, I say unto you, that the hour cometh, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that shall hear, hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so he hath given to the Son also to have life in himself. And he hath given power to do judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Wonder not at this, for the hour cometh, wherein all that are in the graves shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that have done good things shall come forth into resurrection of life, but they that have done evil unto the resurrection of judgment. That's for the word of today's Holy God. Amen. <clears throat> it is the most fitting day to have a holy and sacred burial this Day of commemoration of all souls. And we notice here a few considerations on a missing element. The missing element in the ceremony today, and it's missing in our church today, missing in our world today. When we have the day of death and burial, whenever the bishop comes in for a pontifical mass, he always has four capillati. These are four coat bearers who walk behind him, and they carry the mitre, they take care of the mitre, they take care of the crozier, the hook, and the, uh, the, and the, the, the mitre, the crozier, and the book. And they are, they are there in order to, to, to be an instrument of the bishop in the back, in the, in the mass. We have in the mass today that there are only three bearers. We have the, the we have the mitre and we have the book and we have the buja, the candle bearer, but we don't have the staff. There is no staff. And the reason for this is that the bishop's duty, and this is a great problem of our church since Vatican II, the bishop's duty is to walk through the world as a shepherd. And the shepherd is designated by his staff, by the crozier that he bears. And the crozier is of no value for the dead. The crozier is no longer able to work for the dead. It cannot protect the dead, cannot defend them. It cannot pull them out of the pit. The crozier has two sides. It is a stick that is used in battle. But this stick is only used in defense. <coughs> It is not an assault weapon, but a defense weapon. For when the, sh when the sheep are attacked, the shepherd takes his staff and he beats off the wolves so that the sheep are not devoured. But then also the sheep sometimes are not only in trouble because of the wolves, the sheep are also in trouble because of their own sheep, their own sheepness. Sheep are not, sheep are not very wise. They easily fall into pits. Sheep also sometimes rub one against one another and harm each other. And sheep often fall into a pit. And therefore, there is a hook on the back side of the crozier, on the top side of the crozier, 
that the shepherd uses to pull the sheep out of the pit. Now we come to the time of death. When death comes, it is too late to pull the sheep out of the pit. Whatever sheep is in the pit on the day of death, in that pit he shall remain for all eternity. Therefore, there's no need to have that side of the staff. And on the day that death comes, there is no power to drive off the devil for those that have died in the state of sin. And there is no need to drive off the devil for those that die, the friends of God. Therefore, the staff is not needed. It will not benefit the damned. It is not needed to protect the just. But there is a time for the staff. There is a time when it is needed. And this is when we are here on this earth. When we are walking this earth, we need the staff of the Holy Father. His staff is not only a crozier, but he must carry a crucifix, for his staff must be more powerful. Because the Lord Jesus Christ said, If I be lifted up upon a cross, I will draw all things to myself. And the Holy Father, he walks with a crucifix. He has a most sacred staff that can pull him out of the deepest pits, anyone that falls in the most deep pit. And it has a most powerful weapon, for this staff is on the shape of a sword, and it destroys completely the enemies of God. But when we die, it is not the time of the staff. It is the time of the judgment. So we do not wear the staff, but we still wear the mitre, which signifies the horns of the two testaments. And the bishop is consecrated a bishop, mitre is put upon his head, and the bishop that consecrated him says, Receive the horns, the sharp horns of the two testaments, the old and the new, that you might appear fearsome to the enemies of the truth. The mitre is worn on the day of judgment, but without the staff, the mitre is there, but there is no staff. For on the day of judgment, we shall meet Jesus Christ. And he shall judge us by the testament. He shall judge us by the gospel. But there shall, the time of mercy is over. The time of defense of the shepherd is over. Either we have been pulled out of the pit by the shepherd... Or we have refused to be pulled out of the pit by the shepherd and we remain in the pit, in which case we go to judgment. Hence the shepherd and his staff are so important. There are many heresies in our church. The greatest of them is modernism, which St. Pius then says is the grand sewer and the collection of all heresies. It is evolution applied to the whole Roman Catholic Church. And what is evolution? It is quite simply the theology of death. All that evolution means, whatever you are today, you will not be tomorrow. Whatever you are today shall be taken from you. Not only your clothing, not only your passions, but your very existence. Evolution is a most demonic and satanic teaching that is the closest to hell itself. That they have the belief that whatever we are today, we will lose completely. It is the theology of death. And when this theology enters into the whole Roman Catholic Church, it destroys it. We are in a world of death all around us. And we are not supposed to be yet in this world. We know that we are all condemned to die. And after death, the judgment. But between now and that death, we have protectors. Between now and that death, we have a Holy Father who walks with a staff to protect us, and his staff has a crucifix upon the top. Not a satanic crucifix like John Paul II, 
Well, are, are the Pope Francis, but a crucifix that is the uh, Jesus Christ hanging upon the cross. In order to save mankind who is in this world, we are saved or we are lost in this world. Many people are worried. Tomorrow is the first Tuesday in November. Is America going to die? Is a Trump train going to keep on going? Is death in our country? Does Biden know he's running for president? His brain's been dead for some time. Now he's going to be elected, they say. <laughs> but what is our problem? Our country is dead. Our church is dead. And there are two reasons for its death. The first reason is the shepherds are dead. The shepherds are not holding their staffs. The shepherds are not doing their work. Where are the shepherds? We are experiencing the condemnation of Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Ezekiel. I think it's chapter 32. Chapter 30 something. When Lord Jesus Christ says, I have something against you, ye shepherds, because you have been wicked to the flock. I made you the shepherds of the flock, and yet you are not doing your duty as shepherds. You are not pulling out the wounded sheep. You are not leading them to the waters. You are not defending them against the wolves. Not only this, but you have shorn the sheep in winter. You have taken off their, their wool when they need it in the winter that you might be comfortable and that they might freeze. You have led them to muddy waters. You have done great evil. And the sheep have, are dying. And the sheep are being scattered. And the wolves have come amongst the sheep. And behold, woe to ye, O shepherds. I shall make you pay for every one that is lost. Why is there a crisis in the Holy Mother Church today? Why does a church appear to be dead? Our Lord Jesus Christ was truly dead in the grave for three days. And on the third day he rose. The same thing must happen to our Holy Mother, the Church. Only will not be truly dead as Christ was, but it shall seem to be dead. And it also shall rise as he rose. But why is it dead? Because the shepherds are not holding their staff. The shepherds are not holding their croziers. They are not pulling the sheep out of the pit. In fact, they are guiding them to the pit. And what is the primary way they guide the sheep to the pit? By lies. The lies of the heresy of evolution. The lies of the heresy of modernism, which is the same heresy with a different name. Evolution and modernism are the same thing. By the lies of the liberalism of our modern world. They do not believe in the supernatural power because the staff of the bishop and these bishops that matter are the bishops of the dioceses, the ones that are the true descendants of the apostles, and the bishop of Rome, who have turned their back on God. And it is necessary that they come back to God, and we must pray to the shepherd. Remember, for the shepherds, remember when the Jews were fighting in battle. They went out and fought. But they can only win if Moses' hands were held in the air. But if Moses' hands fell, then they were defeated. And there was a recognition. Swords are not enough to win a battle in our holy church. Swords are not enough to conquer Satan. What is necessary to conquer Satan is it must hold up the arms of the priest. All of us have a special duty in our time to pray for the priests. Especially those priests that are designated by God to have the special care of souls, such as the bishop of dioceses and the bishop of Rome, who is Pope Francis. Benedict is not the bishop of Rome. Francis is. And Francis is not doing the work of God. He is not doing as he should be doing. And what is the reason why there is trouble in the world? The trouble is not Trump. The trouble is not Biden. The trouble is Pope Francis. The trouble is the bishops. The bishops who are not doing their duty. As Bishop Williamson used to say when I was in the seminary, 
He said, the trouble with bishops is they don't fish. We need bishops that fish. If a bishop fishes, then the enemy flees. If a bishop fishes, then the enemies are destroyed. And these bishops are not the auxiliary bishops. But the bishops of the dioceses, the bishops designated by God, these are the bishops. And these bishops have not done their work. They are not holding up their arms. Their arms have collapsed by their side. And because they've collapsed by their side, the sheep are being scattered and scattered and scattered. And the sheep are dying, dying, and dying. Hence, we must pray for the shepherds. The church seems dead. There must be the use of the staff. And the staff has two sides. The staff corrects. And the staff encourages the staff must correct. Fathers carry a small staff in their homes. They also must carry the staff, a father of a family. He also carries a staff. He must correct his children. He must defend them against the contagion of the world, such as the demonic garbage that comes into the TV, by the TV and the internet, into the home. He must defend the home against the satanic attacks of the devil. He must correct his children, but he must also be aware of the warning of the book of Proverbs. Provoke not thy son to wrath. For it is not as if the father must correct. But as you remember, this is the same stick. There are not two sticks, but there is one. The stick of correction and the stick of pulling a, pit, uh, a, a sheep gently out of the pit. It is the same stick. This stick is sweet to those that are sheep. The stick, stick stings to those that are wolves. The stick is encouragement for those that are sheep. It is terror for those that are wolves. We must pray for the church. We know the time is coming when the Blessed Virgin Mary shall have her victory. We must pray for that victory to come soon. The world is getting worse. The church is getting more wicked. But we see some small signs. Some signs, some positive signs that they are beginnings of the coming back to Christ. They have not yet converted back to Christ. They have not yet come as they should come. Right now, for instance, the whole world can watch Archbishop Pagano on his journey to conversion, on his journey to understanding that the real evil of the church today is that the Holy Father, who is not holy and not doing his duty as a father, and the bishops of the church, they are not protecting the shape, and they are following the wicked teachings and the wicked direction and the wicked spirit of that wicked counsel spoke of by our, by our, by our Blessed Virgin Mary a hundred years ago in Fatima. This most wicked counsel is killing the church. It is still killing the church right now. And we must pray to this wicked counsel in all its teachings, in all its demonic teachings, its heresies and its errors, be pulled out of the heads of the bishops. Migano still does not fully understand, but he appears to be very well on his journey, and he needs prayers and sacrifices. And so do also those other bishops, who the Holy Ghost is slowly, slowly trying to enter into their hearts, that they might repent, and they might come to understand, for they are not all devils. There are devils throughout our whole church, but they are not all devils. We pray for their conversion and recognize that there is a necessity to raise, the church will rise again. And it's going to rise by the miraculous hand of the Blessed Virgin Mary. She will be the one that brings about a miraculous victory. It shall be raised suddenly and by miraculous means. And right now, there are millions of souls going to hell. Millions of souls falling into the pit. Millions of souls turning away from God and committing the sins of despair and falling away from God. We must bring them back. Trump will not bring them back. He's not going to make America great again. There is no great without Christ. There is no great without the Holy Roman Catholic Church. There is no great without the love of God. There is no great without the Blessed Virgin Mary in our hearts. Who does not have her knows nothing about great. Now, what do we need Mary most? We need her at death. We need her in confusion. When St. John was standing at the foot of the cross, he was a priest of God. He was just newly ordained. He was a bishop of the church. There he stood. 
And in the crowd, some distance away, was a weeping and timid Peter. And they were both there at the foot of the cross. And they did not understand the cross. They didn't understand what was happening. Their souls were dead. They didn't know what it meant to be a priest. He was just ordained. He had just the oils upon his hands and the oils upon his head and the oils in his heart. As we said, when, when, when Moses was ordained a priest by, by, when Aaron was ordained a priest by Moses, he poured the oil on his head and the oil went down his face and the oil filled his beard and the oil dripped to the ground. And the fresh oil was on St. John and the fresh oil was on St. Peter and they had just heard the most beautiful teaching of Christ. Only a few hours before, and they forgot. They could not remember. They were distracted by the blood. They were distracted by the blows. They were distracted by the cross. Not knowing the cross is not a distraction. The cross is our greatest weapon. It is by the cross that death is destroyed. O mors, ero mors tua, says Jesus Christ. O death, I will be your death. Death, thou shalt die. And where does death die? On the cross. That's where death dies. But St. John did not know that. He was confused. St. Peter did not know that. He was also confused and had a guilty conscience because he had just denied Christ three times. But what did they know? They knew, stay close to Mary. They knew that. St. John, the wise and beloved <coughs> apostle. What is the greatest way in which we know that he was the most beloved apostle? Because it is to him that Jesus Christ gave his most wonderful gift. And he gave it when he was dying. Our country is dying. Our economy is dying. Our businesses everywhere are dying. Our families are dying. Our church is dying. And we don't understand. What do you do when you don't understand? Go to your mother. The only mother that matters. Go there. She's not saying a single word. She's not preaching a sermon. She's just standing at the foot of the cross. They say there is a time in battle when the greatest warrior must use all his strength to take only one step. But the greatest of all warriors used all her strength to stand. This is what we must do right now in our crisis in the church. Stand. Stand at the foot of the cross. And if we're thieves, and if we're murderers, and if we suffer justly because of our sins, then maybe we can cry out, as the thief did, we suffer the just reward of our crimes. It's not the Democrats that are bringing down our country. It's not the Rothschilds. It's not the Bilderbergers. It's not the Jews. It's not the modernists. It's not the wicked bishops. It's my sins. That's what's bringing down our country. When the sacred scripture says that there were bad Jews, you'll never see it say, our Holy Ghost never says there are bad Jews. He simply says, Israel has sinned, and Israel shall be punished. Israel must make repentance. And so it is with us in our holy church. It is not for me to blame the wicked bishops. If I was the bishop of Rome, would I be better than Francis? Probably not. If I were the bishop of the diocese, would I be braver than them? Probably not. 
He who thinks he can stand, let him take heed lest he fall. But there is one thing that we can wisely do in the time of the greatest of trials. Perhaps our country is going into civil war in the next few days. Maybe it is. Perhaps there's going to be brother against brother and all things are going to collapse. They're going to make it really illegal to go to Mass. They're going to really make it illegal. You've got to have your, your digital health certificate. Google and your iPhone's going to tell you whether you can go to Mass. So pray to Google. Get the cheat codes like you do in video games. Find the cheat codes. The cheat codes won't work. There's only one way to fight the evil that is happening in our world today, to fight the death that is in our world today, and that is to stand at the foot of the cross next to our Holy Mother. And if we hang up on the cross, it's a good place to be because it's next to our Holy Mother. And if we don't understand, we can still be next to our Holy Mother. Trouble is coming upon us. But what are we to do? In the trouble that is coming upon us, let us stand with her and recognize that death is being conquered on this cross. There is a destruction that's happening around us, but the destruction shall be the end of the, the devil's reign and the bringing back of the reign of Christ. There shall be the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. There shall be 25 years of good harvest. There shall be a victory, but before that victory, we must be tested. Stand with the faith. Do not play games with heresy. Don't play games with the evil words of the modernists. We pray that Bishop Pigano, who has not yet fully come to the truth, but he sees Vatican II is wrong. He sees that he must do something. He's being persecuted. And there are other bishops throughout the world that we do not know who in their hearts are receiving the grace of God and beginning to wake up. Let us pray for their conversion. No a priest is like an airplane and an aircraft carrier. He can do nothing. There has to be 3,000 men on that boat. Somebody's got to make the boat float. Somebody's got to cook and breakfast. Somebody's got to clean the deck. Somebody's got to put the, gun, the armaments on the, on the plane. Somebody has to take care of the guidance systems. And then he can take off and nuke the bad guys. The priest cannot operate by himself. The bishop needs our help. And it is needed that we pray for the conversion of the bishops. We pray for the conversion especially of the bishop of Rome, who is most wicked. But he's not that wicked. All he is doing is put into play and put into practice what he learned as a young priest. All he is put into practice, the wickedness of Vatican II. That's all he's doing. There's nothing non-Vatican II in Pope Francis. And all he is, is a disciple in the stoolie of, of Cardinal Ratzinger, who is his superior and who guides him. But they shall be converted, or they shall be judged. As long as they're upon this earth, we must pray for their conversion. They must be converted and come back to God. We are members of the mystical body of Christ. Now, in our own body, what happens? If a man takes a baseball bat and he swings it at my head, the last time he did it, my arm went up and it broke. They then had a meeting, all the cells in the arm. And he said, that really hurt. I don't like that. The next time a baseball bat comes to the head, I'm going to see what the head likes about that. Do not go up and block the bat. You see how you like it when your skull gets crashed in. See how you like that. And so the bat comes and crushes the skull head. What happens to the arm? It decays and dies. We are members of the mystical body. We are not the head. We are in the arms. It is more important that we love God and we love his holy church and we love his priests and we pray for the conversion of priests and we're ready to die to defend our holy church. When the arm goes up and blocks a blow, what happens? It protects the whole. And fathers of family must recognize that the saint that we must follow in our times is Tobias. 
Tobias, the elder, and what did he do? He jeopardized his family in the time of danger when the world, the church, became illegal. Because it's coming now. Already our religion is illegal. It will become more illegal. Don't hide too much. Be ready to sacrifice for the church. Be ready to sacrifice for the salvation of souls outside of our families. Those who only try to protect their families are not protecting what God commanded them to protect. Our Lord himself said, if you take care of your wife and your children, are you you're just like the pagans? Are you not more valuable than they? We must pray for the priests, pray for the bishops, pray for their conversion. Give them the grace to pick up that staff and to swing it at the wolves. To pick up that staff and pull the sheep out of the pit. To be fearsome to the enemies of the truth, but their miters. Be vested in the vestments of God, that they might bear the odor of sweetness, and with this odor, drive out the odor of sin, and bring in the odor of grace. We are members of a holy mother church. We are not alone. And we are four marks of our church, which is one holy, Catholic, and apostolic. If I don't go and exercise, if I don't move about, my body will die. And if I don't go about and try to save souls and go about and work for the salvation of others in the time of crisis, and now everyone's getting poor, remember as you get poor, you must still give. You must still be generous. This is how we fight. The shepherd carries his staff. And the sheep are, are obeying the shepherds. Because the shepherd is not carrying the staff. The shepherd is being selfish. The shepherd carries only about himself. And therefore the sheep obey the shepherds. And they also are selfish. And they also are worried only about their own bank accounts and their own life. And our world dies. And our country dies. And our families die. How do we bring it to life? Unless the seed falls to the ground and dies, that's one seed, it remaineth itself alone. Try to save yourself. Try to save your assets. Try to save all the things you have. Prepare for the upcoming difficulties by investing in coal. Prepare by making sure you've got the right kind of water. And you've got all the foods that Alex Jones has to offer on InfoWars. Prepare, prepare, prepare. And those who prepare this way, they may be the first ones to die. They used to say in the retreat in Phoenix House, in Phoenix Retreat House, Lady of Sorrows, that what happens if Y2K really happens? And all the food goes out. And we store up all the food at Lady of Silas, 7th Street and Baseline, our society of Christ and Church that it was at for nine years. We have taken everything together. After a few weeks, I'm going to be walking down the street, and they're going to say, he's still fat. Everyone else is starving to death, but he's still fat. I'm going to check out where he lives. And they go down to South Phoenix, and we got nice machine guns, we got a razor wire, but five million of my closest buddies are interested in my food. Don't die of starvation, but a lot of grateful people are eating my crop. There is another way to prepare for battle, and that is to pour out everything you have. And let this say the Our Father, that sacred prayer that we each say, give us this day our daily bread, not the bread for tomorrow or next week, but give us this day our daily bread, and whatever is above our daily bread, let us give it away. And if we only have daily bread, let us cut it in half, and let us see who makes it through the war. <laughs> we are headed into difficult times. It is a time in which God is asking and the angels are asking, who loves? <laughs> who loves? We must be lovers. Lovers of God. Lovers of the faith. Lovers of the only life that matters, which is sanctifying grace. And this love pours itself out. And this is the way to conquer death. 
When the Lord Jesus Christ is covered, there was still blood in his body. He sent it out so that all the blood was out, so that it finally came out blood and water. And when the, finally the blood and water came out, when his heart was pierced with a lance, and he was completely dead, a wicked soldier saw that what he saw was true. And that soldier became a saint and a bishop of our church, St. Longinus. What is the history of the world? It's the history of saints. The history of those that know, love, and serve God, and all the others don't matter. And when the last saint is ready for eternity, then the world shall come to an end. Let us be saints. Let us pray for our bishops to become saints, the bishop of diocese, and especially the bishop of Rome. No matter how wicked he is, Pope Francis, he can repent in a moment. He can turn back to God in an instant. He can become strong. He can take that sword that God gave him, the cross that was given to him, the staff that was given to him, the tiara that he should be wearing of the threefold kingship that he has. He doesn't know he has it. But let him take on a threefold kingship. Let him take on his staff as God wanted to do. Let him consecrate Russia to the Magna Heart of Mary and union with all the bishops. And let him whack the enemies of God. For understand this about the wicked Pope Francis. The devil right now in 2020 at 1230 is terrified of him. He's terrified of him. Because if that man turns, if that man lifts his finger, if that man stands by the Blessed Virgin Mary, if that man truly turns back to be the true vicar of Christ and obeys heaven and imitates Simon Peter with all his heart, the kingdom of Satan is vanquished. The devil knows it. Therefore, it's most important for us to pray for his conversion, that he listen to heaven and our church that appears so dead today shall rise. So in any case, let's keep our holy faith. And remember, we are not, not all individually live through this crisis. Our church must live through this crisis. And it will. And let us decide to be saints. And we don't understand what to do. So stand close to the Holy Mother. And if we hang on the cross of our sorrows, at least say, I deserve all my sorrows. But this man has done no wrong. And look to marry the queen, and she will get us through our troubles. And remember, generosity and poverty, that's the way of the saints, the teaching of our fathers. And therefore, death shall die. Death shall be no more. And let's pray for the death of the church, that apparent death of the church to come to an end. That the holy bishops, who are not yet practicing their understanding of the holiness that the priests of the God gave them, pick up their staffs, and whack the enemies and the wolves, and defend the sheep, and pull them out of the pit, and then we'll have a happy church again. Let us close down, bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. At the end of this Mass, we'll have the blessing of the, the, the blessing of the body, and then the third Mass, the low Mass, and then finally, at the end of that Mass, the final blessing, and then a little bit after that, we'll have the same thing.